Hi, Obi. It's a nice day to be outside today, isn't it? Hey, boy. Are you a good boy? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a bit of a garden tour. Now that the garden is waking up, here's the lavender. As you can see, it's come back to life. It's gotten quite big, and uh, I can't wait for all this lavender. I like to make lavender wreaths. It's very windy, but it's still a beautiful day. There's all my chamomile. Some of it got knocked over by the rain and the wind. Um, these are my beautiful daisies. They are coming up strong. They get nice and tall. Right here I have some hollyhocks. Uh, apparently once you have chamomile in one place, you have it everywhere because the seeds really germinate everywhere. Here is a different type of lavender. I wish I could remember what they're called, but... Anyway, this one's doing really big, uh, good, and it's a lot bigger than last year. We've got some, I believe these are brown-eyed Susans, and this one, I believe, is purple coneflower. <laughs> if you look, this is weird, but it's got a double leaf on it. Cool. These are these little purple bells. And then all my hostas and my lilies and the little shrub that the dogs try to pee on. Everybody walks their dog by here because I live in the city. So I'll step back and I'll give you a better view there. There's a maple tree that we planted a few years ago, of course. And I've got chives and thyme in there. This. This is the time right there. And this is where Obi likes to chill out. That's his spot. Got lots more lilies. Okay, so this is where the chamomile is. That's all chamomile as well. But I like it. I like how wild it is. So some of it kind of fell over. Um, so in here, got some parsley, some chives, that's thyme, some ground cover, and I also have some spiderwort. That's what that is there. Um, it'll come up soon. It's got some cool little flowers on it. Um, what else do I These are tiger lilies. So you see them right beside the tiger lilies. Um, my poor yellow iris fell right over. It didn't have enough soil, so I have to do that. And these are our blueberry bushes, and if you look, you can see all of the flowers that we had, and they're all going to turn into blueberries. This is the first year that um, we've had any flowers. We just bought these plants last year, and I really didn't think that we were going to get anything, any flowers or anything, but I really wanted to try because, of course, everybody wants to have blueberries. So what I did was I mulched with pine needles to um, to up the acidity in the soil for the blueberries. So under the mulch there is also some manure, some cow and sheep manure mixed together. Um, so hopefully these guys get bigger and uh, I, I hope that I can eat some blueberries that the squirrels don't well, not squirrels as much as birds don't eat them all like they do the strawberries. So here's some hens and chickens. That's what I call them anyway, succulents. I've had these forever. I have so many of them in the backyard. And then right here, we have some purple columbine. And actually, this one's white too. It's so pretty. And the purple ones. 
and right behind them are the purple irises. And then over here, those are some brown-eyed Susans and a little shrub with these really pretty little flowers. And then of course, uh, milkweed, which kind of fell over from the storm, but it'll come right back up. Milkweed for the butterflies and some rhubarb. And then this is all dill. And then right there, that's some catnip that I had planted in my winter sewing bucket that came up really nice and strong. So now I'm gonna have catnip forever. I had onions in here so last year, so there's there's chamomile probably in here as well, and dill because they're a companion plant for onions and garlic. And then that is the steps down to the backyard. There's a snowman that blew over that I haven't put away. And that is it for the front yard garden. And this is how I collect my water. I would love to have a big, um, one of those big giant containers, but this is what I do. I make do. Here we are on the south side of the house. And that's where the rhubarb and the strawberries are. Um, I just have these tiny little strawberries. This is why I'm not really that. But I just can't throw them away. I can't throw away plants. But I wish I had plants that had big strawberries on them. Um, we'll see what happens. Some of them are supposed to be bigger than others, but I don't know which plant is which. And um, I've harvested a ton of rhubarb already. You can see it's looking pretty sad. And these are the black raspberries. And as you can see, they are flowering. I haven't had a chance to really prune them very good, but I mean, they'll do their thing without being pruned. They are still gonna have lots of blackberries on them. So here's my sweet potatoes. I've been mulching with rhubarb leaves. They dry up really fast and uh, they're good for the soil. And that is parsley right there. There's some wild daisies that I've left there. Some black eye Susans. And we have purple flowers on the sage. I love to let them, I like to let them flower because the bees really like them. And then that is Italian oregano, which just spreads everywhere, which I'm fine with because honestly, I will trim that all back and dry it in my dehydrator and I will use it and I never have enough. I can honestly say I make a lot of pasta, pasta sauce, all yummy things that are Italian. Okay, and then the next level down here is what I like to use as my lettuce bed because it, it's in the sun right now, but it uh, it doesn't get a lot of sun, so it's pretty shady. And as you can see, um, the bigger pieces of lettuce over here to over to the right um, are from my winter sewing buckets. See, there's some still that I have not uh, taken the plants out of. They're still growing in there. Um, but yeah, the big salad, the big lettuce is uh, from the winter sowing. And then the ones that are littler in the rows there that you can see um, are the ones that I direct sowed. And also there are two rows of carrots and then onions that got knocked over by the rain. Um, those are from last year and I missed them somehow. So I'm growing them for seed. Um, they'll flower and then I can collect the seeds. So that is my side garden tour. Okay, so we're at the backyard. Came down these steps that I showed you. And that's the lilac bush that is now done blooming. Um, that's our shed and our pond. And let's see if I can show you 
how many tadpoles are in there. Can you see them? Lots and lots and lots of tadpoles. And a couple of goldfish. Okay, so this is the pond garden in the backyard. bird bath in there is just sitting on a stump. It was a free um, bird bath top that when we went and got these free stones for the backyard. So here are all, you can see there's iris in there, sedum, hens and chickens, and tons of those orange lilies, of course, that everybody has. Is that garden there? I just love it. I love the way it looks. The birds, the robins love that bird bath. Lots of hens and chickens. And we have some flowers here along with the raspberries. These are lilies, tiger lilies, and a big sedum there. And I planted some more raspberries here. Hoping these are actually raspberries and not blackberries. Okay, so I'm going to turn around and show you my tomatoes. Okay, so I have my tomato garden here. All mulched. And I like to support my tomatoes like this. I find the cages just don't do it, especially how tall these tomatoes that I plant. I have Roma, San Marzano, and uh, Sweet 100s, which are really, really tall. So I like to do them like that. That way the rain or whatever does not knock them over. And then you can see my bird bath in the center there. I have tons of tomatoes. I think I counted 50 tomato plants. I'm planning on learning to can and uh, I'm gonna freeze a lot of them. So there's the little patio that we made. <laughs> um, there are actually onions in here. I find it ha I'm having a hard time with onions if anyone wants to give me some tips. Um, I am going to mulch them with straw like everything else, like the tomatoes are here and the basil. Um, but I just don't want to smother them, so I'm trying to let them come up. But as you can see, there's grass coming in stronger than the onions. So these ones are the white onions and right here is the red onions which there's only a few up. So I don't know. I don't know about onions but garlic. Look at this. The garlic is doing awesome still. It's still going. I'm so excited because I I'm new at growing garlic. This is my second time doing it, and uh, I noticed that the stems are nice and thick on them. Like, look at that. Which means the bulbs are nice and big. And voila, there's the potato garden. Let me step back here. Look at that. So there was only one spot in the back on the right there where the potatoes did not come up. The rest of them all came up. Um, I did a video on planting potatoes and I'm so pleased with the mulch. Again, the hay is really helping. Um, potatoes really love it. They came up right through um, lots of straw and they look awesome. So I'm really hoping for a good amount of potatoes. Here's my sad, sad pepper garden. Um, these peppers here, see they're still hanging on. Some of them even have peppers on them, but they just look so sad. Um, but I just can't pull them out, so I just left them. I planted them right during a, um, before a heat wave. So we'll see what happens if we get many peppers. And then right beside we have more brown-eyed Susans, um, some sunflowers. And we have some beans, so green beans and yellow beans in here. And I have some more that I started inside just in case, so I'm going to add them to the row 
and I'm going to put up a uh, support and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I also have this ladder set up. It's a very, very old ladder. <laughs> I bought it at a garage sale. It's literally going to fall apart pretty soon, but I'm going to use it until it falls apart. At the back, what I did was I put the put my peas. Sugar snap peas. I put them at the back of the ladder and then I'm going to let them grow up the back. And I have some cucumbers that I haven't brought out to plant yet. And I will plant them in the front there and they can grow up the front of the ladder. I've done it many times and it works really, really good. Um, keeps the cucumbers off the ground. It keeps the cucumbers from getting mushy. And uh, if I can keep the squirrels away, then I can have some pickles. Okay, so here is my backup pepper bed. Um, thank goodness for a bumper crop. I started a second round of seeds. Um, I was going to sell them, but I burnt all the first ones. So most of these are actually green peppers. California Wonder, you can let them grow until they turn red. Um, I've got jalapeno in here, I think as well. Um, but most of my chili peppers got burnt. So, so yeah, so I've got some there. And then we have two right here. And then this is where I put some dill, an extra tomato. I had so many tomatoes, I just stuck them wherever I could. Um, those are all cherry tomatoes. I haven't staked them yet because they're so short still. But right here is going to go uh, squash or a pumpkin. I'm going to let it grow out. Probably another one here. And also there. So I've got winter squash and I've got pumpkin. And uh, that's what this side that hasn't had anything in it yet is going to have. And then my garden will be full. So there's my garden tour for June. I hope it gives you some idea of how you can turn an entire city property into a food garden. <laughs>